No way. If I undid the blindfold and turned the light on, you could walk through your house where everything's been changed and been rearranged with confidence. Why? Because there's light. So we hear this commercialized faith that's what's being promoted in the world today, that life is better in the dark. Because the inverse is you can get away with more things in the dark. In the dark, nobody sees what's going on. But as believers, we're changing it. We say, as believers, we're saying there's this crimson thread that runs all through the Bible about light. God says, let there be light. John chapter 1 was the person who came and was the light of the world was the person of Jesus Christ. Stay in the book of John and turn to chapter 8. Verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people and he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I tell every people, I tell people, the longer I've been a believer, the more confidence I have. Now, I'm not intrinsically a confident person. This morning I was having a conversation with somebody and said, I realize I'm not an alpha male, I'm not a weak dog. I'm okay just following people. But as I've, the longer that I serve the Lord, I, I've been more confident. I've been, been a better leader. Why? Because I know it's not, it's not me who lives in me. It is He who lives in me. It's God who lives in me. So when I walk into a room and I know that God has told me something, that God has delivered me a message, I'm not afraid ever to preach the Word of God. I'm never afraid to offend anybody if it's from God. Because God said, I'm the light of the world. And if you're living with light, you don't have to be afraid of the darkness. Right. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, right? There's the coolest thing that, that happened. I had the opportunity several years ago to go to Israel. And one of the problems with going to Israel is, if you ever have a, a chance to go there, go there when you're younger. I know for everybody that's a little older, like, oh, I wish I lived a long time ago. <laughs> because it's not handicap accessible. You have to walk everywhere. And the way that it works, nothing, nothing is on flat ground. You're either walking uphill or you're walking downhill. And it's in the desert, so it's really, really hot. And so what would happen is people would strategically build cities by sources of water. They would wait for it to be on a hill because that would be natural protection. On, on an elevation, if an enemy comes, you could see them coming. And so what would happen is the same areas would be, would be built up. The enemy would come and destroy it, so they would tear it down. It would become windblown, and pretty soon you look off and you go, hey, there's nothing there, but it's by a well, it's by a water source. Hey, let's go and build there. And so what would happen is after the generation after generation of this is happening, what they call it, they have different strata. And so instead of it being on a full, that's the reason you have to walk uphill and walk downhill because they built on top of each other. Actually, in Israel today, they don't build basements anymore because if they would dig down into the basement, they may find like a little artifact. And so instead of the opportunity of trying to find an artifact, they just build on top of these different strata. And so when you would go to these different places, they would be like, hey, this is Jerusalem. And you're like, Jerusalem, I remember it there. We, we go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, and this is where Jesus was born. Can you show us where Jesus was born? I'm like, well, do you have a shovel or do you have a backhoe? Like, do you have the shovel or backhoe? It's like, well, it's probably about 10, 20 feet down. And you're like, well, that's no fun. You know, we go into Jerusalem and say, well, is this, well, yeah, again, but it's probably uh, 75 feet down. We're actually, you're like, well, can we go somewhere? I mean, if they all this money to come to Israel to where Jesus walked, can we go somewhere where actually Jesus walked? And they're like, yeah, we're going to go to the Sea of Galilee. You guys know the Sea of Galilee? What happened there? Somebody. Jesus walked on water. He come to see. There's a lot of stuff that happened on the Sea of Galilee. And so we were there. And to me, that was like, it, it wasn't the place where they believed that Jesus was crucified. It wasn't the place where they believed that Jesus was born. To me, the, the, the most spiritual connect that I felt to God, the most connect that I felt to God, was when we were on the Sea of Galilee. Because it wasn't like, hey, yeah, this is like the Sea of Galilee, but where Jesus walked was 10 feet below the water. It's the water. You couldn't, you couldn't get any lower. So we were to the place, like, you know, you touch the water, you're like, hey, like, this is, like, really neat. This is really cool. And so as we were walking in to this little restaurant, a little, little place for dinner, we stopped. See you, Galilee, and we'll look over in the distance. And our tour guide said, I want you to look over there. And so this was this little peninsula, this, this little island-type place. He said, what do you guys see? Now, the sun was out, which means there wasn't much darkness. And when the sun was out, we looked over there, and we're like, uh, if I was to guess, just from the way it looks, I would guess that there's nothing over there. 
Somebody will say, well, you know, you see like the scraggly trees, you see some rock formations, but they say the same thing. It looks kind of desolate. There's nothing there. He said, I just want you to take a mental image, a mental picture of that, okay? So we went in, we had our dinner, we had our great conversation. Uh, you actually go to this restaurant, and the guy there said, you can have Jesus fish. Jesus fish? Like, what is Jesus fish? Do they crucify the fish? <laughs> I was afraid to get it because I thought maybe it came dead. And like, if you already ate it, it came back to life. That's what it was really bad. I'm like, Jesus fish? What's a Jesus fish? And what it meant was it was in the Sea of Galilee. And so the actual, so maybe it just was a marketing thing. I was like, I'll take the fish, but as long as I won't come back to life, like, that would mess me up. So we get done with dinner and we walked out. And as we walked out, he said, now look back over to the same place that you thought was desolate. The, the, the same place where you thought there was nothing over there. What do you see now? And it looked like it was on fire. It was a blaze. Because when the sun was out, they used the natural light. They could walk. They could talk. They would live their life. But as soon as the sun went down and now the darkness started to cover the land, what happened? They had to light a lamp. Right? They would light a candle. And Jesus says, in the same way, like a city on a hill, let your light so shine before me. Not that you get praise and adoration and accolades, but what will happen is that, like that city on a hill, when people think that this world is desolate and that, that, that we're going to hell in a handbasket, when they see that you're on fire, when you see that you're ablaze, they won't give worship to you, but they're going to praise your Father in heaven. Amen. You don't light a candle and set it up on, under a bowl. That's what you do. You light it and put it on a lampstand. And it illuminates the entire place so everybody can see. That's something that's just stuck with me. I'm like, man. Because I talk to a lot of people today about America. <coughs> I talk to a lot of people today about, about young people, right? About the current generation. And people just kind of shake their heads and they're like, oh, America, it's going to hell away about America. It's so dark. And I just kind of smile. I'm like, that means we have work to do, right? I've, I've, I've quoted this before. It's one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And this was talking about slavery. This is talking about, you know, setting slaves free. And he challenged the people that was in his church, people that followed after him. And he said, hate will never drive out hate. So be careful. I know we're in an election year. And if I would invoke a couple names, like some people may invoke some hate, some anger. But just remember, hate will never overcome hate. Dr. King said that darkness will never drive out darkness. Actually, if you try to make dark, if you try to make darkness go away by darkness, guess what? It gets darker. So what do we do? Like, so what's the encouragement? Turn your Bibles to First John chapter one. So because he said hate will never drive out hate, he said darkness will never drive out darkness. He said the only way that you could remove hate, you know what it is? To love. He said the only way that you could overcome the darkness, you know what it is? Somebody flip the light switch. Isaac had an opportunity to, to be part of uh, student council, World Fitness at U.S. Elementary School. And so he came home one day and he said, Dad, I want to be the, I want to be a student council. And I said, why? I'm like, do you have to do that? That's the difference between he and me. He's more like his mother, right? And so they want to go above and beyond, right? So he said, Dad, I want to be for student council. And so he ran for student council. And so that was a congratulatory thing. I pat him on the back. And then about a day later, he comes home and he says, Hey, Dad, uh, I want to be president of student council. I'm like, why? He said, well, you know, they started talking about all these different jobs that you could do, that you could be the secretary, you could be the treasurer. And he said, the vice president. And he said, I figured that if I was going to do something, I might as well become the president. <laughs> Again, he's like his mother, right? <laughs> he's going to go far in this life. And so we said, he said, one of the things that we have to do is we have to give a speech. And I'm like, all right, we can do this. <laughs> like, this is now you in my wheelhouse. So we started talking, and I said, what, well, what do you want to say? And he said, Daddy, I, I, I just heard Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And he said, I just want to let everybody know that only love and light will win. I, I shouldn't get emotional about this. 
And so here's my son, who at eight years old <coughs> gets it. And I talked to his teacher later, and he said that when they saw the I Have a Dream speech, and he heard that, he was just transfixed. And I remember he said, his teacher said, he raised his, he raised his hand, and he said, Mrs. Bowman, my daddy says that, and we do that. If I can implore one thing to you today, man, is that this world is dark. And I worry about what this is going to happen with my kids. But I meet these young people that come to church here. And all it takes is one person to stand up. Because the greater the darkness, the more power of a single candle. Right. The greater the darkness, now not just that one candle, but that one candle becomes two candles. That two candles become four candles. And pretty soon I can look off in the distance and say, it is well with my soul. Because I see that there's a generation of young people who love the Lord. Listen to what it says in 1 John chapter 1, <coughs> verses 5 to 9. This is the message we have heard from Jesus. And declare to you that God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. Let me say that again. If you're afraid of the dark, have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. The greatest lie that many of us live is the lie that we say to ourselves. We think that we can live in the darkness and still be children of the light. You can't. It's very intrinsic. It is, it is not two sides of the same point. You are either living as a children, a child of the light, or you're living a child of the darkness. Amen. Where God right. is, there is no sin. And where there is sin, there is no God. Right. So Amen. choose this day, who are you going to be? Amen. Because if not, we lie to ourselves. That's the most damning lie we can tell. That's the most dangerous lie we can tell. Because right. if I lie to you, you can disbelieve it. If I lie to God, God is truth, he doesn't believe it. But when we lie to ourselves, guess what? We have the opportunity to believe it, and there's nothing inside of us that tells us different. But, listen to this, verse 7. If we walk in the light, he is light. Talk about Jesus is the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us. From all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we lie to ourselves and the truth is not in us. But listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar and his word, and his word has no place in our lives. So here's a challenge that I have for you. That Samsung commercial is kind of funny, right? If you're ugly and you want to make out with somebody pretty, go somewhere dark. Unless you're married, isn't it? It's a married pretty. But. We think that living in darkness, we can get away with it. I think of the person of Moses. He said he looked that way, he looked that way, before he killed him. We think in the darkness we can get away with it, but nobody else knows. That's the reason why it's so dangerous to live in the light. But I'm telling you, once you step out from the darkness into the light, all the shadows fade away. Yeah. And Jesus, at the end of his life, when somebody asked him a question, you know what he said? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But if you're not careful, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I love the words of Joshua when he comes to the end of his house, the end of his life. He says, as for me and my household, we choose to be 